Welcome to the Legacy Building Leaders TV show, where we feature game changer and solution providing leaders from different sectors of our economy. In today's show, we feature Dr. Tapera Chikandiwa, the founder and director of High Achievers Academy in Borodale. Uh, welcome to the Legacy Builders TV show, and uh, thank you, our host, uh, Dr. Charles Mugaviri. Uh, my name is uh, Tapera Chikandiwa. I am the director and founder of High Achievers Coach International Academy. It is my pleasure to be with you today as I share my legacy, uh, where I started from uh, to be where I am today. My idea has been inspired by the tomato, which you can see there. I've got tomatoes there on the table. My mother taught me how to grow tomatoes a long time ago. That was in 1979. It was uh, the coaching of a humble woman, uh, which um, assisted me over the years now. When I then started working on them one day, I then discovered um, the importance of growing tomatoes. But not just tomatoes, but how to do that um, with learners in education. The tomato is quite an exciting crop, which requires pruning for it to be, uh, become a successful crop. So the message that I got from God was to grow young people the way tomatoes are grown. Tomatoes are complicated to grow. There are diseases that affect these um, plants. But basically what you have to do is, if you do not want a bad behavior, you are supposed to prune it. If there is a disease that is there, you're supposed to treat it. Young people require attention from us adults. We are supposed to ensure that as young people grow up, they are pruned, they are monitored so that they can discover themselves. I got inspired by this crop to the extent that I managed to establish a school. But I didn't just start by establishing a big school. I started doing home-to-home uh, -home tuition where I moved from one place to another, one house to another, training young people, coaching young people, doing what today people would call extra lessons. But I adopted the attitude of a coach where I coached the young people for life. I've done that for many years. That's from uh, 2002 when I got into Harare uh, to ar around 2010. I would move from house to house coaching young people. And my name became a household name in terms of um, coaching young people, business studies and accounting. This, these subjects I taught them in Rusapets and Faith Mission, and I'd become a successful teacher at that place. And thanks to my mentor, Moses Mkoi, who was the headmaster at that school, he coached me how to run a school. He coached me how to deal with young people maybe at uh, just at the class side and um, in the hostels. It was quite an exciting experience. So when I got to Arare, now working for Gateway Schools Zimbabwe, I would do uh, work with young people during the weekends and during the holidays. And the program I was running actually became a success story where I had so many people wanting my services. And I decided then to centralize the services because I could not then uh, work on moving from one, to one house to another uh, and then accommodating all my learners. I then decided to centralize them where we started working at the Anglican Cathedral in the city of Harare uh, at the Rampers Room. That's where we worked with groups of young people and the program continued to attract volumes of people from different centers around the country. It became very difficult for us even to manage the numbers when we were at um, the cathedral. It continued to Mount Pleasant High School. And today we speak of a beautiful school that has been established from humble beginnings and we're quite excited. It has been quite a complicated journey for me and the process of registering the school was complicated with challenges involving the police, getting penalties here and there. But we managed to overcome all the challenges, registered the school, um, and um, the program is no longer one-man one vision. 
but it has now become the vision of the whole community where I have got many people requiring attention from different parts of the country and actually we are now working with individuals from different countries. We've got an establishment of over uh, 60 teachers. We are registered with the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education and all the other statutory bo uh, boards, right? We are quite excited to be a leading school in the country where we have a number of new uh, directors coming in and we always assist everyone who comes in to look for ideas on how basically to start a school. It is a community responsibility for us to ensure that we have more schools coming up, continue moving on, facing the challenges without compromise and ensuring that the Zimbabwean child is given access to quality education. And as we speak currently, we are working on different platforms to ensure that young people can continue to gain access to education without limits. And um, our God will see us through and our community will support us because it takes a village to educate a child. It is not my responsibility alone, but it's the responsibility of the whole community. Legacy building is a journey and not an overnight process. As we have heard from the story, of Dr. Chikandiwa. One of the key features about legacy building leadership is the ability to influence future generations of leaders. In the next segment, we are going to hear Dr. Chikandiwa engage and interact with learners from his school. Um, good day to you, Doctor. My name is Brandon, and I'm a lower six. And I'm sure you know that there's, there, there's, there are high levels of unemployment in the country. Um, and this has led to a thrust in the development of entrepreneurial skills in young people. What advice would you give to, to young people trying to delve into um, entrepre entrepreneurship? Thank you, Brendan, for that uh, brilliant question. I love to see young people um, in enterprise uh, doing uh, what they know best my advice to young people is that you know there are many opportunities that are around you can start any business anytime there is the talk that people really need capital i don't believe that you need a lot of money to start a business you must just uh, uh, arise with your passion with your attitude and there you are boom you're starting a business you can start any form of business do what you enjoy best um if you ever maybe seen branded eggs whereby these eggs are branded like brand on eggs just get a, a, a sticker where you stick on uh, on your eggs each egg, each egg has got a sticker and then you sell it at, at a higher price the, the 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 packaging you can do these things using your hand right hand writing and not even typing so there are many opportunities that we have um, which can be taken you must be just desiring to do it fight through don't be discouraged because people always tell you that you cannot make it they will tell you that it's impossible to get into business because those who are in business actually then try to make it look impossible there is nothing impossible your attitude will take you places be confident and move on you can start any business anytime and the community is there to support you, to encourage you. Good day, Dr. Shikandiwa. My name is Zwanae Saonyama, and my first question to you is, what have been the key success factors in your leadership journey? Thank you, Zwanae, for that uh, brilliant question again. Um, my story is quite um, uh, littered with a lot of exciting and complicated um, situations my major success story was to overcome um, my mother's death when she passed on that gave me wings where i uh, decided to make sure that her legacy had to live on so i'm encouraged by my parents and uh, my father having been a park keeper um, i grew up in a park so i'm not born in a family where there, there was money. 
I think we used to eat leftover food from uh, different places. Um, so that background, which is complicated, has been one of my major uh, push factors where I decided to overcome my background and discover who I'm supposed to be. And I got a community that supports so well uh, with the, the ministry coming in to support, with the government of Zimbabwe supporting, and with a team of um, exciting teachers, motivated teachers, and students or learners who really uh, enjoyed working with me. So I became somebody who was loved by the learners, and I moved on to succeed with them to the extent that my success story is basically a community success. I've been encouraged by the community. Good day, Dr. Chikandiwa. My name is Megan Gumunyu. I'm an upper six student. My question for you is, you always mention attitude. Why do you consider attitude as an integral part of education? Thank you, Megan. Um, I just came across attitude and I researched further and actually discovered that uh, Henry T. Ford at one time talked about attitude. He just instructed these guys to uh, come up with a six cylinder engine on a block and the guy said it was not impossible it was, it was not possible it was impossible then he says when i come back i would like to see that we've done it and then he instructed them to do it and they did it that's why we've got the motor vehicle today with the cylinders so i then discovered that success is just an attitude according to henry t ford if you believe you can succeed or you cannot succeed it's in your in your mind Attitude is very important, it's 100%. It can take you places. If you believe that you can fly, you can fly. That's your attitude. If you believe that you are beautiful, you are beautiful. So I believe that anyone who believes that is intelligent or capable can do almost anything. You know, the sky is not the limit. It's the limit to those who see the clouds. But beyond the skies, there is some, some way. We, I believe that there are places there. And... Uh, it's, it's your attitude. You can succeed, you can fail. It's what you think, what you believe is what you get. So God gave us this ability to be able to do things. And we must uh, move out quickly and grasp what we want and move on. That's attitude. There is no one who can be a failure. It's just a matter of attitude. In your view, what makes a legacy building leader? Thank you. For you to become a, 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 a legacy building leader, you must have the correct attitude because many people will be looking up to you and you've got a vision to fulfill. So the most important thing is attitude. Where attitude uh, can build or destroy a nation, attitude can build or destroy a church or a school. So I believe a leader must be one who is able to work with the people. At times you are ahead of the people but at times, just like we are seated together here, you are with the people so that you are supposed to go to the different destinations together with the people where you are supposed to be leading the way. But at the same time, you must be a very good listener. You listen to the, uh, to the people around you, to the community, to the parents, to the learners, to the government. It follow through what the regulations are saying. So a leader must be somebody who listens. You must always have your ears on the ground, listening, and your eyes are supposed to be open, seeing what's around yourself, right? You must know where you're going. So as a leader, many people will be looking up to you. Uh, you will notice everywhere you go. So you must lead by, by example. You must be an exemplary leader, and you must continue to read. A leader is one person who continues to read and read and read and discover more and more. A, le a legal leader must be somebody who is able to benchmark with successful uh, stories around the world. So be open-minded as a legacy builder's leader. That's how it works. You must be listening and be able to uh, borrow technologies from different areas to discover who you are. Thank you. Legacy building leaders ooze with inspiration and the impact and influence their generation and future generations of leaders, as we have heard from Dr. Chikandiwa in his engagement and interaction with the learners from his school.
We are now going to be having the next and last segment of our TV show where we are going to zero in on the legacy of Dr. Chikandiwa. Uh, Dr. Chikandiwa, when one listens to your legacy building leadership story, uh, one gets an impression that there is a place for passion and for purpose in legacy building. What, what, what is the place for passion and purpose? Thank you, uh, Doc. Um, you know, a purpose-driven life is one of the most important virtues that we have been created for. We are supposed to, to have a purpose. That's the reason why we are here on earth and doing things. So I believe my purpose, for example, um, is to see young people doing things, young people being rescued, and I believe in pushing for that to be achieved. So I believe purpose and passion, you know, you need to be passionate about whatever you do. If you're not passionate, it means that you won't invest in it. So I invest in education because I've got a passion for it. It's something that, is, that flows within my blood. I enjoy doing it. And when you enjoy doing it, you've got a purpose-driven life, you've got a passion for whatever you're doing. It therefore means that it becomes a roller coaster ride where you enjoy doing it. Nobody is forcing you, nobody is pushing you. So I believe I'm not pushed by anybody. It's in my DNA. It's in your DNA. Yes. So you are living a purpose-inspired life. And I notice from small beginnings, coaching students from house to house, uh, getting to the cathedral. I remember uh, seeing you there yeah. and seeing that passion, that fire of passion and your purpose, then Mount Pleasant, and then the building of the school an international school. So in a way, what we are seeing here is that uh, building a legacy is a journey. It is. It's not an overnight thing. It's a journey. Yeah. When I've traveled around the world, I've gone places with my teachers. I've been to Dubai, Singapore, Malaysia, Australia, Germany, you know, you name it. At the place I've not yet visited, maybe the United Kingdom. But whenever I travel, people think I'm going on holiday. No. I'm going to discover my passion. I go and visit the places, visit the schools, get into the international schools, understand what ideas are there, and then bring them home. Because this is my life. I live that, I dream that, I think of that every day. And uh, to come up with an international school, it's important for, for me then to benchmark right. with in international best practices. Yes. You know, a man who does not travel reads one page in the book of life. You know, you need to see different things being done in different countries and they have that zeal to bring those things to your own country to ensure that the the, the spirit of independence really will surround us for generations to come that we are an independent nation and then that we're able to do things as a people as the zimbabweans so in a way legacy building leaders are lifelong learners you have to continuously learn and also be coached, be mentored by others. I heard you in your story even refer to your early beginnings when you talked of Mr. Mukoi, you know, mentoring you. Mm -hmm. And I hear you now talking of uh, having a global perspective and global exposure where you are continuously improving yourself uh, and broadening your own horizons in terms of your exposure. And uh, now let's come to, to your legacy, the, this, the school. Let's come back to that. I, I feel uh, there are so many people, the reality on the ground, is, and I did a bit of research on this, there are so many of our own people, local people, who initiated schools, who started schools, but many fell by the wayside. They never got there. They never achieved their dreams. What made you to achieve your dream, to build an international school in Borodale? According to our constitution as a nation, a school is a non-profit making organization, right? Mm -hmm. So I, researched on that and asked myself why exactly are people not making profit out of schools and i realized that it's important for anyone in a school to invest in the school to continue investing and investing and investing in the school and even given the covid 19 pandemic is going to throw out many players out of the education sector because people must understand that covid 19 has come 
as a disadvantage, but also it's telling people to move forward to start innovation in in in, in education in terms of the wash stations automatic stations, how you're going to be sanitizing around, the social distancing, uh, the textbooks, no sharing, you know, all these things. If you don't invest in that, no parent would give you his or her child. They will not give you the children. So I've learned that it's important to continuously invest in education and not try to make a profit and avoid what I call flight of capital, where I would say if I make money, I would take the money to the channel. Is it at Channel Islands or to different places where I will stole it. Let the money flow within the organization and buying new furniture, computers, and moving on with the times to ensure that generations are not going to look at us. The future generations are not say, going to say, ah, what kind of people were there when they look at the old computers and the old furniture, 1972 furniture in 2030? medium-sized economy. We don't need that. Let's move on and move on with the vision of the nation and try to to, to be ready for 2030, medium-sized economy. So you continue to reinvest in the vision, in reinvest resources so that you have got a quality school offering quality education. We must never stop investing and change is normal. Change is now permanent. That's what we're having. Change is not permanent. Look at the virus. The virus itself is changing and the people are not changing. There's this variant, this variant coming, and then we have organizations which have remained stagnant. Let's continue to invest and invest and invest and come up with new technologies. These technologies will take the learners up to another level. So I believe that investment must never stop. And when you built the school, you did it in an economic environment that was full of challenges. How did you do that? Um, because it was at a time when even, you know, established enterprises were even going down and collapsing. And at that time, that's when you actually built, you know, a, a, a school which is of international standards. I just decided to take off my tie, my jacket, and I got into the work suit as the contractor. And we are supposed to pay thousands of dollars the contractor. I was the contractor now in doing things. I had to help dig the foundation and do everything. I was the buyer. I don't believe in giving up. I push through and I am not a pushover. The economy cannot defeat me. I will fight the economy and I always rise above the situation. That's me. I believe in fighting through. So a legacy building leader, in a way, is a game changer and a solution provider. But I also noticed this investment that you were talking about. You invest in your staff. I mean, giving them that kind of exposure, international exposure, that's, that's incredible because a school is not just quality buildings, but it's also the quality of the staff that you have which will produce a quality learner. Thank you. I will take you to physics, for example. How can a teacher who is teaching physics teach about aerodynamics and aeroplane actually taking off the ground and he has never been in, a, in an aeroplane? It's... It's not possible. I expose the teachers so that they are in a position to teach with confidence. They understand what they're talking about. They are wide traveled. They, they, they know a lot of things. They know different cultures. They've been there so they can be better teachers. So the teach, teaching is one of the most important professions. And I believe in empowering my teachers. They must be empowered. They must be able to drive to school. They must own houses mm -hmm. so that they teach with a passion. So I believe that an empowered teacher can then go and empower the young people. Legacy building leaders are inspirational and motivational. And we have listened to the story of Dr. Tapera Chikandiwa. Let's meet again in the next episode of the Legacy Building Leaders TV show. <laughs>